write everything down. I'm at that stage of my life where I now lose my notes and I have to, I need notes to remind myself to look at my notes. <laughs> but if God knows all, and it's not even difficult for him to know all this, do you think he'll be surprised when we tell him that we're worried about our finances? Do you think he'll be worried that, uh, concerned that uh, we don't like our job? Our kid, kids are causing us issues. <clears throat> he knows your thoughts before you know them, and your words before you even speak them. So pour, pour out your heart to the Lord. Nothing you say will surprise him. In the third verse, Luke 18, 1. Can we read it together? Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. Persistent prayer honors God because it expresses our complete dependence on Him. Since God knows what we need before we ask Him, we don't have to repeat ourselves to get His attention. But that's not the full story. We all know from personal experience, not our prayers are answered at first when we pray them. Sometimes we get quick answers, but most of the time we've got to wait hours, days, weeks, months, or even years before we see the answer. Some people here have been praying for our loved ones for many years to be saved. Is that a lack of faith? I think the repetition is proof of faith. The repetition is proof of faith. And the repetition is the proof of faith. I would add that sometimes the more something matters to us, the longer we seem to have to wait for the answers to come. And it is very true that when we pray for our loved ones to come to Christ. Um, Let's read a continuation of Luke 1. So from 2 to 8. I'll, I'll read it by myself here. He said, In a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. There was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, Grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused. But finally he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and attack me. Verse 6, And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust, just, unjust judge says. It will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night. Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice, and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? So what do we know about this story? We know that the lady, or the widow, had an adversary. We know that she keeps on bothering the judge. And you, we know that she eventually gets justice. We also know that she can solve her own problem, but she got what she wanted. What do we know about the judge in this story? We know that he didn't fear God or cared what the people think. We know that he was unrighteous, didn't care for the widow at first, and was really unwilling to help. The facts of this case didn't move him, and he had no desire to see that justice was done. To him, she was just another bothersome woman. He only helped her because she was persistent. She kept coming and bothering him until he was afraid that he would... She would beat him down and continue coming. He only gives her what she wants because she kept bothering him. So give the lady some credit. She never gave up and she got what she wanted. In order to get the lesson what Jesus intends, we need to understand two key points. We are very similar to the widow. Our problems are usually too big for us. No matter what we do, things can get worse. And there's a times where it seems like the whole world is crashing down upon us. We may go weeks or months, or even years thinking we can solve our own problems. But the line between uh, happiness and tragedy is very, very thin. It only takes one phone call or even a text message to bring us face down, begging God for help. Number two, God is not like this judge. The judge here is an uncaring jerk who lacked all the compassion for this lady. He granted her wish simply because she kept on coming before him. So why would Jesus use this illustration? 
He seems to be calling us for persistence in prayer, and by using this example of a man who is nothing like our God. If persistence wins over this unjust man, think about what it does to God, who really, really cares for us. Persistence works on earth, or works even more in heaven. So, two more points that, you, that uh, Jesus is trying to show us here. Will God bring justice? Yes, he will. Will God keep putting us off? No, he won't. We've already said that the judge is not like our Father in heaven. Yet the judge is a little bit like him in one respect. They both delay their answers. The judge delayed his, un his, his answer for unjust reasons. But our God, he delays his answers for the righteous reasons. Sometimes God seems like an unjust judge, and we often feel that way, especially when we cry out to God for our loved ones. Is God like this judge? No, he's not. What we do when it seems that God is like that judge, will we give up or will we continue to pray? If we think that God is like this judge, will we get angry and stop praying? If we think that our God, if we think we have to talk our God into loving us, will we become cynical Christians? If we think that our pers uh, perseverance convinces God to do something he otherwise wouldn't do, then we'll end up thinking our prayers are more powerful than God himself. But if we believe that God is our mighty Father Almighty, who loves us without limit, and knows what is best for us, and then we cry out to him day and night, believing that he answers, it will come quickly, and of course, right on time. So why then is persistence important? The one who knows the answer must be able to get it, or give it. Number two, the one who seeks the answer must be able to receive it. Persistence is the great teacher for Christian growth. God does not become more willing to answer because of our persistence, but we may become more capable of receiving the answer. Persistence prayer does not change God, but it does change us. It purifies our motives, it forces us to confront our helplessness. It makes us ready to answer God's answer. It humbles us that God alone gets the glory. Many prayers we pray shouldn't be answered because they're so shallow. If God answered every prayer the first time we prayed, we would soon become complacent in our faith. Because God conditions us, conditions his answers on our persistence, we realize how helpless we are and how totally dependent we are on Him for everything. So what are you praying for now? Are you praying for a family member to come to Christ? Are you praying for a loved one who's got cancer or some disease? Are you praying for a victory that, uh, over a nasty habit you have? Are you praying for wisdom for a big decision? Guidance for the future? Are you praying for a wife or husband, a son or a daughter, how about a deeper walk with God, grace to be able to forgive people, hope for the future, money to pay your bills, money to pay the bills, physical healing, courage and strength to continue on every day. More importantly, you're praying for the boldness to be able to share the word of God to other people. Let's also continue to pray for uh, persistence. Pray for the determination to hang on to the Lord until one of three things happens. God gives you the answer, God changes the circumstances, or God removes the burden. God is greatly glorified when we do not give up in prayer. Not all of our prayers have been answered yet. But don't give up. Don't stop praying. Keep on believing. You never know what God will do. Never give up. Amen. Amen.